the stadiums. Yes. Ah, yeah, no, I, I've always rated him like ever since he played for Rovers in the League of Ireland. Like he's always been a player that I always mm. thought was like, you know, smart, like good, a good outlook going forward. But like, yeah, I think, but in that match in particular, though, like you know, you have two players like Matt Doherty is like a wing back, like he does well, doing brilliantly at Wolves and. I know James McLean's probably had a bit of a tougher time at a club level, but he's always like, you know, he's good going forward. Like, you know, he's direct. He can whip, whip a good ball into the box, but the two of them just seem stifled. Yeah, they in just, that position. He doesn't yeah. know whether he should be forward or whether he should be back. He's got a cotton in between, and then he never, doesn't do either. He's kind of just stuck, stuck in the middle or stuck in the mud. Doesn't really know where he's at. Coleman never looks comfortable in that right wing back position for Ireland either. He doesn't know whether he should be bombing on. And it's just a, it's just a continue. It it just seemed to be a continuous thing. But uh, yet I mean, we draw that game. We go on to play uh, Wales, and you know, as I said about tactics, we we set up the same way. They obviously get that free kick. Wilson, people were arguing Randolph should have saved it. Oh, I thought he should have saved it myself as well. Even though I'm mate to Darren, <laughs> sorry about that, bud. But uh, I thought he, I thought he just could have done better. But if you look at the goal behind the goal uh, and you watch it back you can see um, it's you know if he just kind of moves a little bit that yeah. way at six as I am he probably would have saved it you know and but you don't know how, you know it's easy for us to say watching from a repeat you don't know how, how fast that ball is ah yeah like hindsight's twenty twenty, as you yeah. said like, you, like in real time like in, there's a lot of other factors and he's banging them in now for derby all the time anyway yeah like he's scoring worldly after worldly for yeah. derby you know like so there's no shame in conceding a goal like like, like that, but I think in jet like disregard like if it, it if he should have saved or he shouldn't have like it's just the performance again in general was just way below what you'd expect, and like even as a fan like you know like I don't go to like as many as the internationals as I probably should do, but like the reason is that as well like I don't mind going I wouldn't no problems paying money to go and watch Ireland play like but if they're gonna play if they're gonna play for you don't want to spend like and it's not cheap either like you know it's dear enough to go and watch Ireland play yeah. like you know like. It, Say you spend forty quid to go and watch Ireland, like you want to look at Friday if they go away and give it a good go when they got beat and you believe like, Especially if people are coming from all over the country. That's it as well. Like and the supporters clubs all over the country, they go travel to see the team play. And that's actually it should be another law really as well as the crowds at the AV, you know. Like mm. I, I think that's I well, sure like me and you would have been what teenagers when just before D V with the old lands down road that used to be packed and the atmosphere always used to be the place used to be rocking like and I don't think it's any coincidence at the time like we we're like doing well and getting good results and playing like somewhat decent football and then even with Trapatoni to an extent the crowds weren't too bad but things were just falling off a cliff now lately. Yeah. And you know, like as I said, fans aren't gonna want to turn up and like you know, even if you're a diehard, like it's tough tough count you know to spend 30 40 euro and then say that's if you're in dublin then but like if you're as you said you're coming from something like galway cork or Kerry, like that's a day out here like that's Jerry a, or yeah, belfast you're, you're or taking a day well. off work you're spending go. money on food petrol then your match tickets so it's a price and, yeah, and the expenses of you know the, to be fair the lads like to come down or up or across from wherever they are, and and because uh, I know people that travel from America to go to games and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's and a, you know, is the cost of their hotel, like Gargle, and everything yeah, like that couple, as well. It could be a couple hundred quid, like just yeah. to go to. You want match. to be entertained. That's it. Um, and I just think, you know, and value for money, I suppose. It's value for money, but it's just, and then like that all leads onto the pitch as well. Like the player, like players would admit that that gets like if you if that place is. You know yourself. Darren, that, was, Darren admitted at the, at the, uh, after the Northern Ireland game, he just said, "Yeah, the, the, the crowds, you could you could see like people were getting fed up." He said it himself. Yeah, that's what I his, mean. Uh, like if, his academy. if that was the other way around, the place is full and everyone was behind the team. Like you'd guarantee those players would be playing like even like a bolt. When well, you look at like Celtic in the Champions League, once that crowd gets behind Celtic, like it scares yeah. other teams, and you know, yeah, they got results his, against PSG and Barcelona exactly. and stuff, you know, so. You know, I think that's with what, you know probably a worse. Well, yeah, well, it's definitely is a worse squad than our national team, Celtic's team. Yeah, but like, going out against Messi. And, yeah, so like so. one one thing in the future, I think oh, hopefully now with Mick McCarthy, there seems to be a bit of optimism on the mm. thing with Stephen Kenny as well. So hopefully now for the first ma- his first match, what's the first match at home is Georgia, is it? Yeah, but the two the, there's uh, two other games, uh, highlights. I suppose Ronan Curtis. The fact that he got capped, 
Yeah, he's didn't been do, doing... Didn't do great in the game. Didn't do, didn't do bad. But um, did what he could, I suppose you could say. Because he didn't get offered a lot. You know, it was a tough game to kind of come into, especially for him. You know, he played with Derry, moved across to Portsmouth. Portsmouth. And, you know, he's been buying them in for Portsmouth or whatever, but, you know, international, international football. And yeah. they do have, like, Johnny Evans is, is a very good uh, defender. And so is uh, Cat Cart. He's playing at Watford, isn't he? Yeah. So, I mean, Johnny Evans, I mean, what has what, what that fella not won, to, to be fair? So to, come, to be coming up against them kind of for your debut is always going to be tough. But I thought he held his own. I think for the future, I think he's going to be a good player for us. Yeah, no, definitely. As you said, he's doing well at Portsmouth and also I think... I think he'll get them up. If yeah, it's goes somewhere in January. Yeah, yeah, as you yeah, I was just gonna say, I think there's been rumors of clubs in the championship having a look at them and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, like that I was think a, they might hold off on it. Yeah, Portsmouth, I'd say they'll try their yeah, best. Yeah, like so if they yeah, if he goes up, I'm sure he's an, he's another. He's a, I think he's only was he twenty two, twenty two. Something like that because he was playing the under twenty one, yeah, and so he got he got be. called up to the squad obviously, yeah. but never actually played. So that's another reason to be optimistic. Because like yeah. Ronan Kerr is like he's doing well in England and he got a few yeah. caps and as you Obafemi said Obafemi was on the bench for that game yeah Obafemi was on yeah. the bench but he didn't come on but um, which it, is a, which is a point we'll make after what were you going to say no I was just saying like someone of the ground and curls like I think like there is causes to be optimistic like you have him as a young player like he's just going to get better with more games as yeah. well you know that kind of way and so. it's a very physical league too and, and he's, he's a big he's a like, you know, if, like, if they want to play a physical game, like, mm. he suits because he's a big, strong, I like him because he can quick. dribble as well, though. Uh, yeah. Like, he can dribble with the ball at pace, at people. And, you know, no defender likes that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a long just... time since we've had someone who kind of knows that. I suppose Obi Femi will be, will be the same. Yeah. But, and Shane Long, he's direct, but he doesn't run with the ball at people. He just make people go, oh, you're going to tear me inside out and score, are you? You know, I know he's doing a league one and people continuously slate until he starts doing it at the Premier League but you can only do you can only beat what's in front of you and you can only That's, score against you sure look at Northern Ireland they had players in their squad that were like playing in League 1 and you know like they looked like you don't hear like they've qualified for tournaments they've gotten good international results so I just you know I just I think international football is different to be honest like I think he, I know it's a higher standard but I think I wouldn't be too worried about him playing in League One. Like, you know, if a For player's now, in good form, he's in good form, you know, that's going yeah. to translate into, you yeah. know, if he's con- like, you know, confidence is a massive thing. Like, you can get, say, like, look at someone like Jeff Hendrick, who seems his confidence seems to be shot at the minute, but you know he's a good player, but then he's not doing it for Ireland. But then Ronan Curtis is in good form and he's really confident based off what he's doing with Portsmouth. And then he can turn up for Ireland and can play really well, like, just based off the confidence that he has from playing yeah. well with his club. Yeah, and then obviously you have Obi Femi uh, playing against Denmark. But the thing that was really annoying was the fact that O'Neill didn't know whether he wanted to play for Ireland or not. And the fact that I think that was the, the last draw for everyone was so like, why are we calling up this fellow when he doesn't even know if he wants? Like, and that wasn't Obi Femi's fault. That was O'Neill threw him under the bus there for me, and basically was like, well, you know, he's come training. Yeah, didn't fo- yeah, it's found that strange as well. Like, you know, why as you said, why call someone? The thing we found out, the oddest was, like, you know, said they called him up for the, like, say, if he played in Northern Ireland in the friendly match, all he was worried about was he'd play, and then he'd turn around afterwards and be like, yeah. ah, yeah, you know, actually, oh, don't, like, don't, don't pick me against Denmark, then you're like, like what was That's the actual the point? point in the, yeah. oh, I don't know, I know, subsequently, then he did. Can yeah. You, like, but that's, I think that's what everyone's, you know, thoughts were, they're thinking Declan Rice, same thing happened, and you're like, Oh, we can't have this again. You know what I mean? And you just you just didn't want that to happen. But like, the fact is now you know speaking now he's obviously he scored his first Premier League goal. He played subsequently only his last game, mm. and I think that for me was a high because I think he should have got a year ago. I think Denmark phew, that should have been it. Yeah, as you one said, should have been fired. Yeah, I think after the let's be honest was he, the way we were beaten Dublin was humiliating. Like especially after the match in Denmark where we we. we where we drew, sorry. Yeah, but the subs for me against them like a half time in that game, but um all in all, uh four goals in the calendar year. I think the real high point for me And two two was he had to point out as well, two of them weren't a, like a, a friendly that was pretty mean and so yeah. yeah, but I think that the the two uh I suppose you could say three high points. Uh, McCarthy in, Robbie Keane in, Stephen Kenny in Mm. And then I suppose if you want to throw Terry Connor and uh, Rude Doctor into that mix as well, because they're all going to be working together. But for me, I thought, you know, you can already see the bit of, you know, 
I wouldn't say pride is restored, but you can almost see that players are willing and wanting to play for Ireland now. And there's a lot of talk of the likes of Bamford, Redmond, you know, even talks with Declan Rice apparently went really well. And then the guy in Holland, Danny Crowley, he's playing. Danny Crowley, yeah. Um, he's playing for what, Willem? Willem too, yeah. yeah. So And he's doing well now as well. So there's a lot of optim- optimism around, you know, can we get these players in? You know, the fact... You know, I don't think McCarthy's going to have any issues with Harry Arthur or any of these players. There's James McCarthy's just back from injury at this moment. Uh, then you have, you know... Robbie Brady will be probably get a few games to yeah. get him back up to speed. Yeah, actually, he was, a, he was a high point against Northern, the fact that he was back from injury as well. I forgot to point that out. But, you know, there's, there's, there's reasons to be optimistic, I believe. Matt Doherty's, you know, probably the best right back in the Premier League at the minute. On form, yeah. Yeah, Declan Rice on form is probably the best central defensive midfielder in the top two, I'd say. Um, I can't think of anyone right now who's kind of better than in, in form wise at the minute. Well, like you know, not going down the Premier League route, but like you know, maybe yeah, no, but like but no, I actually put that he's probably the best young player in the Premier League at the minute. I think is probably yeah, well, him or Madison maybe at Leicester. Yeah, but no, I just say Declan Rice based on consistency, you know, like yeah. well, Madison's in his tw- like say best teenager, like Declan Rice is only nineteen and he's yeah, well, putting it? in like man, like not man of the match performances, but like solid performance after performance. Yeah, and then you can see him getting a new contract. Like I think people are saying that maybe hopefully signing. The, I see him here and one fellow saying maybe the new the new contract was kind of him saying he might declare for England was a way to get. His yeah, new contract, the, and then like he'll jump, throw in his lot with us, which yeah, uh, yeah, like, you'd like you'd like to you'd like to think so. Despite what people say, you still get people saying, "Oh, well, you know, fuck him if he doesn't want to do it." I'm just like, well, like, oh, like, I'm not, I, I'm not of that mentality. You know, player that good, I want to play for. Oh, this is the thing as well. Like, without going down history, like, there's been players that played for Ireland in the past. Like, and you hear stories about them. Like, you know. They just play for Ireland to further their further their own careers. Whereas like with Declan Rice, like he like genuinely hasn't a, like I've watched a video with him like talking about how proud he was to play for Ireland because yeah. his grandparents were from Cork and he was like, you know, it's a massive honour for me and my family. Then you hear that his own dad, he was like for all intents and purposes is Irish. Both his parents were Irish, yeah. and his family want him to play for Ireland. Like they're not like it's not like the case of. Oh yeah, the Italians play for England. Playing for England, you get more money. They want them to play for Ireland because yeah. you know. Sure, even his dad never put McCarthy and Keane. Yeah, and like, and then again, like it goes back to the whole thing. Like for me, like you know, watching Mick McCarthy there on goals on Sunday, the other week talking about Declan Rice, you know, you know, like he, we build our team around him. He'd be a hundred cap player. Like he, like he seems a much more approachable and easier man to deal with. Like you know, more reasonable than what yeah. Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane were. Like so again, we. I think a lot of these issues fall back on them too. Like, you know, we've talked about, like, you know, there's been plenty of players that have had problems with them. So, you know, maybe, like, you know, sitting down with Mick McCarthy is probably, is probably like, you know, might convince them that, yeah, um, yeah. And the fact that I think Keenan might have had a word in his ear as well, Robbie. Yeah. Well, what better person to convince you to play, for, well, not to convince you, but to, like, to try and persuade you, you know. To, and in a way, like, in a way, though, you shouldn't have to persuade him. It should be in him or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean, but... Um, but, like, maybe, you know, maybe it's a different... To act. make him feel well, because yeah. Keane wasn't there. Keane had retired. But yeah, that's uh, what I mean. Maybe it's more, like, the atmosphere now will be a lot more, you know, yeah. welcoming. You know, you might have younger But if players. you're not getting on with McCarthy, you can go and speak to Keane, or you can go and speak to Steve Terry Kenny Connor. if he's involved at the yeah. first. Well, Terry Connor would be his number two, who, who a lot of players have said that, you know, you can go to Terry Connor. And he's basically a good cop, and if yeah, the card yeah. is back up. But a lot of people, and then all the former players that played under Mick, have all said, you know, he's the best Actually, man for the job. They love at, them. Yeah, you only have to look at Ipswich. Did like Ipswich last season were like mid table under him, challenging the top like half of the table. And this yeah. season they're rock bottom. Yeah, and like it's the and same they don't squad. Really of, don't anyway. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you can obviously see he gets the most out of his players. And even the first time he was in charge, like you know, there was a lot of players like. Not disrespecting them, but like you know, say like a Matt Holland, he was a he was a good player, like but he wasn't like world class. But like when they played, when they put on that green jersey, like you know, we seen how well we done not get into the world, Korea and Japan. Like them players mm-hmm. played above themselves for Mick McCarthy. It's one like, of very important goals as well. Yeah, that's in So like you know, I think if he has that effect again this time around with the with the squad of players, and as you say, we have some good players like James McCarthy. I think he's a smashing player. He needs just to get the games under his belt. Yeah. So there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic, like in my opinion. 
Yeah. And then finally we have might have the answer to like a bit of a goal scoring issue with Abba Femi and the highlight another one I know it's like getting his first goal for Southampton might help him kick on even yeah. more than or uh, you know even if Redbin can come in there as well yeah, uh, he's a, he's a he's a very good take player take him all day long you know but uh, just lastly Stephen Kenny uh, massive high for me I think um, yeah the fact that he's going to come in uh, look I, uh, to me it makes sense. A lot of people say it doesn't. And McCarthy said he wants. To, he, he felt like he should have walked away the first time after 2002. He felt like he should have walked away after the tournament mm. because he found it hard to get the, the, the best out of players and get, get them going mm. again. So for me, it makes sense because he said that in the press conference and people forget it. Um, and then the fact that Kenny comes in for the new era, I think it makes loads of sense. He'll be familiar with the players for the 21s. He wants to bring players through, you know, I think there's no better person who knows the league inside out in terms of League of Ireland, youth players. You know he is a very good knack of not, like known players and, and and bringing players, young players through, and not being afraid to give them the chance. Yeah, most yeah, that's that's it as well. He won't be, and he'll get them playing good football as well. You just have to look at how, not just on Dock, but any of his team. Well, like Bar Rovers when he was there, but like when he was at Derry, when he was at. Bowls before even before that, and as I said, Dundalk he always has his teams playing good football as well. And he didn't change the style like, against the yeah, like Zenit. That's, that's it. Like you know, that's the one thing. Like you know, like that links back to the players that we have. Like I don't think what was it? Um, I think he. Well, I can't remember what the quote was. I think it was guys like just because you're born Irish, you're like you're inferior or something like that. Yeah. Like so, something along those lines. And he's dead right as well as you said. Like when Dundalk played Zenit and. These other like major big European clubs, Bate. like they still play the same AZ, way. Was it, yeah. They played Bate, AZ Alkmaar, and I was at the Bate. Like the Bet by Borisov 3 0, and that Bate Borisov team a year or two before that Bet Bayern Munich, you know. Yeah. So, like, he'll get the teams playing the right way. Like, it doesn't matter what the players he has, like, and you know, that gives the players confidence as well. Like, if they're told, like, you know, get the ball down, knock it about, like, you know. They won't have this thing in their head or worried about, like, you know, hmm. making it almost afraid to play football. Yeah, you, you, you also look at, you know, he, 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 he kind of spoke with some players. We kind of highlighted Troy Parrott as well. He's basically on the fringes now at the Spurs. Yeah, first he was given the squad number there. 71. Yeah, yeah see. So, again, that's another attacking option, whether he plays down the middle or not. I think I think you could well see him being being brought in and maybe capped under, under McCarthy. He's 17 soon. I don't think Mick would be afraid to put him in. If did he give Robbie Keane as for his cap? Did he? Eighteen, yeah. So there Very you tough, go. Like, I think it's the same thing. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Like so, he won't. It's he'll be almost. He won't be afraid if he thinks. What's that? There's obviously that young fella at, 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 at Inter as well, Ryan Nolan as well. Ryan Nolan. There's plenty. Like even look at the Ireland under nineteen's at the middle. Like now there's Adam Eade is it? Adam Eade is a good player. Like Aaron Boulder. I know maybe not in the immediate term, but like he's a player to keep an eye oh, yeah. out on. Like you know, but. As I said, like if what's they say, if you're good enough, you're old enough. So yeah. if he thinks like if I wouldn't care if Troy Parrott's not playing first team football at Spurs, but like if he's shown the good, if he's doing, doing it, we're, we're that's there. what I mean. If he's doing the goods for like say the Spurs under twenty threes and at you international, like you know, bring him in, cap him in friendly. Sure, what, what's the worst that can happen? You know, like worst thing, worst case scenario is the guy's not ready yet. We'll give him another year, year or two. Yeah, that's it. Like you know, at the very least, bring these young fellas in to. As you said, what Wales did, give them a feel for the atmosphere, give them a taste of what it's yeah, like. like he's kind of getting at Spurs at the minute. Yeah, pretty much, like, yeah, and as I said, give them a few, like, I think, was well, it Harry? Lee O'Connor and the Cueven Gallagher as well. Yeah, as well, you know. so oh, and Randall's having a very good season, uh, for clean sheet wise as well. Yeah, so there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic now, like, in my opinion, so, um, yeah, it would be com- Yeah, kind of coming now towards the end, as so I'm feeling a lot, a lot more optimistic. Are we, I'm sure even... You know, yeah, as I said, you just even there's I'm sure there's young fellas that you just know we're not thinking of at the minute. Even actually like you look at the League of Ireland, like you know, say if we're struggling for goals like Pat Hoob, and yeah. he's a fella that'd be high in confidence. I thought he should have been given a cap around the Northern Ireland game, just yeah. given a cap to say, Okay, let's see how you do, you know, you, you there's no there's you couldn't be any worse than anywhere who we've put out. That's it. Michael Duffy's another one. I don't know if maybe his international clearance didn't go through, I'm not sure. I think it will next time yeah. well, like he's another player like Patrick McAlenny be interested to see whether they get the look in now through through Kenny that's kind of something we'll have to discuss at a later date because we, we obviously we have no crystal ball so um, those types of things we'd be interested to see I'm very intrigued to see what his first squad will be 
I'm very intrigued I, I, I'm, and I'd be quite excited for it too just yeah. to kind of it's just anticipation because I've had so many times where you know you get you, you, you have O'Neill with his very much favouritism towards you know certain players like McLean and stuff like that and playing them out of position just to accommodate them I hope McCarthy's not going to do that and he plays players in their actual positions and you'll just see a bit more shape and balance I just hope he picks players that are playing on form as well like, yeah as I, as I said no disrespect to James McLean like I always admire Shane someone Long. or Shane Long I've known like fellas that always turn up for their country every, anytime they're called up and always like give 100% effort like you know you can't fault them but like I think James McLean hasn't been in great form in the past while like you know so you want to like pick players that are playing well like you know struggling in a, in a stoke so that ain't doing much in the championship either. yeah and you know like you know he's been a great servant to Irish fo- football like you know like, yeah. why is he 29, 30 now? Like, so there's still, like, you could still, like, you know... He still has a few years, man. You could still, like, if you know... You, if, if, you could still, you know, start ending up in good form and, you know, like, you can... I think the best thing for, for McLean would be to just get get the hell over to Celtic. That's the best yeah. best move for his career that he, he he could do. He always said he wanted to play yeah. for them. But the, money, well. the money's an issue. And, yeah, and then as well, like, a good, it would be a good move as well because, obviously, they... Oh, they're in Europe every season mm. as well but as I said the one thing I hope is as you said the squad will be interesting but I just hope that they pick players based on form as opposed to I think Marin O'Neill is just like I hate when managers do when they pick players just based on their previous reputation and not yeah. based on what it's they're actually doing huh. if you're looking Matt Doherty like you know was playing week in week out for who like one of the Wolves in the Premier League player of the month and he couldn't even start for Ireland he only started really because there was an injury yeah you know, like he should be one of the, like the first name on the team. She probably at the minute, like if to say Declan Rice doesn't declare for yeah. Ireland. A hundred percent, I agree with you. But uh, I think I think we've covered pretty much everything. Uh, throughout the year. If there's something that you feel like we've left out, uh, let us know in the comments. We just thought we'd do uh, a video just on the on the on the year it's kind of been, and uh, kind of start with the negatives and then with a positive. So uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, and. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, you know, we're next target now is the 5,000 subscribers. We're nearly on 4.1k. So uh, everyone who's helped us get to 4k so far, thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to check out our sponsors, uh, the Taxi 24/7. The link is in the bio for their app. Download it today, and don't forget to check out. There's a competition uh, to win a jersey signed by Andy Reid with those guys as well on our page so check that out okay and uh thanks very much for watching have a great day happy new year if you want to say anything oh, yeah just the same again like i know i've only been here a wet day but yeah thanks for watching some of the feedback on the videos has been good so far yeah. and have a happy new year and we'll see you in 2019 come on you boys in green